Hello, we're continuing to walk through John and I'll read from chapter 17 verses 9 to 11. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. Here in chapter 17, John gives us the privilege of listening to Jesus pray to the Father. And we're still in the part where Jesus is praying for his disciples. We're focusing especially on what Jesus asks for them in verse 11, that the Father will protect them by the power of his name. As we've seen, these disciples are to remain in the world and with the help of the Holy Spirit, they will testify to the world about Jesus. But that is a work the devil would absolutely love to destroy. So the disciples need to be kept safe, and so does their message. We see in verse 12 that while Jesus was on earth, he protected his disciples. The disciples were given to Jesus by the Father, and Jesus kept them safe by the name the Father gave him. Literally, he kept them in his name. So now that Jesus is leaving, he prays, verse 11, that the Father will continue to protect them. Again, literally, Father, keep them in your name. So what exactly is it about this name, God's name? Well, basically, throughout the Bible, God's name is the truth about God his revealed character. His name reveals to us the truth about who he is. And here, the truth about God the Father is that he sent Jesus to save the world. Whatever we can learn about God, we can only really know God the Father as the one who sent Jesus. That is how God has chosen to make himself known. And that is the truth to which the disciples must testify. So, of course, it's vital that the disciples be kept in that truth, kept in his name. Anything other than the truth about God, as revealed through Jesus, is not the real truth. And so only by being kept in that name will the disciples and their message be protected. Not so much physical protection. We know the disciples had all sorts of trouble, but protected from the devil and his lies and false teaching. Anything that undermines Jesus as the revelation of God to us. Because that is the message they've been chosen to proclaim. And see what else it leads to in verse 11. True unity. Being kept in God's name means being united together as believers. Not in some artificial way, but Jesus says to the Father that they may be as one as we are one. Being kept together in God's name means being as united as Jesus is to the Father. That's amazing. And so as I leave Christ Church for Pastures New, I honestly pray that you, and all the work at Christchurch will be divinely protected. That you will be kept in God's name, kept in the truth about God as revealed in Jesus. That is the message that you, as Jesus' body on earth, must never stop proclaiming. And I pray that as each of you are kept in that truth, that you will be truly united, that you'll continue in one mind to proclaim Christ and that through you he may be glorified. Let's pray. Father, please keep Christchurch Westbourne in your name. 
please protect all the ministry and all the members there from the devil and his lies. And may Christchurch Westbourne be as united together as you are to your son Jesus. And may the name of Jesus continue to be glorified as you work through them. We ask this in your name. Amen.